Hi you guys, welcome back for another homeschooling video. If you're new or recently subscribed to my channel, I would just like to say welcome to you. Thank you for coming to my space here on the vast internet and listening to what I have to say and watching another video of mine. I truly appreciate all of your support, your comments, your thumbs up. Um, you guys keep me excited to continue to make homeschooling videos for you. So today we're gonna be talking about my morning basket, which is something that is probably a familiar homeschooling term. I believe Pam Barnhill was the mastermind behind the morning basket idea. And every homeschooling mom that I know probably uses the system in their own way. So I did a video on this last year when I was using sunlight and showed you what was in my morning basket, but I have not done one this year since we started using primarily the good and the beautiful. And of course it has changed. So I am here to share that with you guys. I have my basket. It is so heavy. Here she is chock full of stuff. So we are gonna talk about what's in my morning basket. Now, if you're like, what the heck is in my morning basket? Well, basically what it is, is it's a basket that houses all of your materials, usually books, um, for your morning time in your homeschool, which is kind of a nice way to ease into the homeschooling day. I really prefer to do this first before we go and we start working on individual math and writing and language arts. I really like to start with this. And the idea behind your morning basket is that some of the things you're not really getting to every single day, but you want to get to them at some point. So you leave them in there and you kind of do a rotation. Um, now that's going to look different for everybody, but that's kind of the gist behind it. Um, so this is my morning basket and what I've got in here, I'm going to unpack it and show you and explain to you. Um, so the first thing we have are all of my kids Bibles and I did a video on how I do Bible time. I'm pretty sure I'm going to put it up before this one. So you'll want to go check that out if you want to hear more about how we do Bible in our homeschool. But my morning basket always has our Bibles and I just take my basket and bring it over to the couch. And that's where we um, go through this. We do Bible time every single day um, in conjunction with a daily devotional that we're using this one right now. This will always change. So um, this is just one that we're using this year. And then also in my morning basket it are my kids um, nature slash Bible journals. So when we're going to do more of like an, um, a Bible journaling time following reading the Bible and our daily devotion, then I've got those here to, ready to go and um, they can just work on them while I am reading something else or continuing to read the Bible or whatever it is. So all of those things are in my morning basket and we do them every day. Another thing that I keep in my morning basket is this old, old, old um, Bible story for boys and girls. It actually, which is so cool. I love vintage books like this. It has writing to someone from 1951 and here you guys, this is not from my family. I actually bought this at the San Clemente used bookstore. Um, but it is the Bible story in story form. And so we're just slowly reading through it. My kids know pretty much all the big stories of the Bible, I would say pretty well. Um, but I just think it's really cool. And so we're reading this slowly but surely. This is not something I read out of every day, but I do probably one to two times a week, so it stays in my morning basket. Um, also, what I keep in my morning basket is our read aloud. Now, when we are doing a history unit for the good and the beautiful, the book will correlate with that history. But I recently shared in my quarter one update, if you wanna check that out, that I am alternating history and science. So when we are doing a science unit, I, for our read aloud um, book, because I always want to be doing a read aloud, uh, The Good and the Beautiful has them for um, history, but when you're doing science, there's not really like, they have read aloud suggestions, but they're, they're more um, like factual books, not like a, um, you know what I'm saying, like a chapter book. 
So we're just picking fun ones to read. And so right now I am reading Stuart Little. So I always keep our uh, book we're reading in my morning basket because I do read that in the morning as well. I have my prayer journal. I should have pulled that out. I like doing my prayer journal with my kids because I think it's fun to do it together. So that's in there. And then, like I said, for history, it would be a little bit different, but we are currently in the middle of our first science unit on kingdoms and classifications. So I always keep um, the bound science unit in there because anything that it has reading, um, I like to do it in the morning and then it kind of like um, gives them an idea of what we're going to be learning about that day. So I'll often read a little bit out of here. And then to go with science, um, this came with our microscope we bought for that unit is this Us Born, the World of the Microscope book. And so we are reading about, a, there's a lot of information on these pages. So we are reading about a page or two a day. So I'll have this science book in my morning basket. And then another one that goes with the science theme is this book called It Couldn't Just Happen. Um, and this is basically stating why all of the things in the earth couldn't have just randomly occurred. So it's a science book, but it's backed up with faith. And so I like that combination, obviously. And so I'm reading, um, just asking my kids, what do you want to read about? Human body? Okay. And then we read about that. I am not going in order and reading this whole book. I'm just pulling out little bits of information um, for them. And so if we were in a history unit, I would have my history book. I would have the big book of history stories. I would have the read aloud that corresponds with history. And then I would probably have a few picture books from the library that also correspond with that history unit for my younger ones to look at. Um, and then I would have the rest be the exact same. So now my morning basket is empty. So that is what I keep in there for our morning basket time. Like I said, we don't do all these things every day, but we do rotate through them on a weekly basis. So I hope that gives you an idea of what is in my morning basket. And if you guys utilize a morning basket system. I would love to know about it. Let me know down in the comments below what yours looks like and what you keep inside it. And if you've never heard of this, then I hope that I've given you um, something to think about. I will try to link some helpful uh, videos down below on the my morning basket thing. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.